everyone. Uh, just trying to straighten up the camera and stuff. Sorry about this afternoon. Oh, hang on. I'll just check this. Okay, here we go. So we are in and it is nearly five o'clock. Um, thank you for your patience today. Um, so... just take a minute to kind of like to kind of like refocus and listen to the music hey cuz um hi cuz I thought I'd just let you know before I come in every time I'll, I'll, I'll come in then I'll let you know um but just had some uh, time with the family this afternoon watching my cousin's family service in, in Tukuro, which was just amazing. And it was just a really, just beautiful time with the family, um, watching in and, and just seeing the family together. You know, it's just times like this where you just really want to be there. But um, unfortunately, you know, we can't be there. There are a lot of our family members that that tuned in from like Rara from all over Australia and Auckland too because they can't travel as well um, down to Tukuro. So we were able to watch it online and it was just beautiful. And um, I guess we're all, all those who tuned in today, our family members, they're feeling kind of like a little somber and, but um, happy because we saw the family be together and we saw our beautiful nieces speak um, for their dad and um, it's just beautiful anyway I kind of like um, as I'm preparing because I, I prepared this before everything happened this afternoon with the family service and that and I was looking for a sign <laughs> it's funny I say I was looking for a sign because sometimes you just wait for a sign until you actually know what you're meant to do so I was looking for a sign to see if I should do the live earlier today or and I, I was doing something that I know I shouldn't have done, which was rush the spirit. And I was trying to just get through it before I get busy and stuff. And I knew I was doing the wrong thing. And I was just looking for a sign, just something to tell me that, um, yeah, what you're thinking is right. And just pause and don't rush it. I had all those things in mind. And I, I didn't uh, act on it. But um, something, a sign did happen that I was meant to stop. So that's where I stopped the live. Um, this afternoon and um, I'm, I'm glad I did because I I just knew that I was just in a flustered spirit and it's funny that I was in a flustered spirit because this is kind of like the same not not exactly the same but um, likened likened to the spirit that Nephi has in the chapter today and he's a little bit flustered by it and um, by the whole situation and sometimes we do get in these situations, I did mention it in the live before, sometimes you get in these situations where things kind of like knock you back a bit or, you know, take you off your, your normal uh, daily feelings into something quite, uh, um, just, um, I, do, can't, I don't have the word for it, but just something that kind of like puts you out of um, your normal feeling of being content to something quite flustered, something anxious, um, and I had all those feelings today because I, I'm, I wish I was there with my family. And um, so today we do hear a bit of counsel about what happens when we have feelings like that, when we're a little bit flustered about our situations, whether they be good or, or not good. Um, we have a bit of counsel from Levi, um, and we can learn something from his example today. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at Hedeman chapter 10 um, and uh, also for those who are just coming into the live later on uh, just welcome again because I know that there's a few people who have added themselves to the page and um, just another warm welcome to those who are, have come on board and just kind of like navigate your way around the, the page to see the, what goes on and just feel the, the spirit of, of what we do here and, and the intention of, you know, the whole reason why we um, why we meet every day okay 
Uh, what else have we got here? Family service. Yes, I attended my family's family service. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. And I think, you know, we take for granted this use of technology. And now we're in a situation, especially with all the COVID restrictions, we can't be in certain places. Um, we can't cross our border. Our border is locked down. And, you know, other places um, are on lockdown too. So we're not able to just, you know, be somewhere just like that, how we used to be. Um, but I'm grateful for this use of technology, eh? Um, how we can do that while use awareness is awesome. Awareness is awesome. Um, yeah. Okay, so the tip I have for today is when you're feeling down, do a little pondering. And this is part of what Nephi does in the story today. Do a little pondering. And we'll talk more about, about, uh, more about pondering. But a question that I have for you is like... Um, <clears throat> What do you think pondering is? Like, give me your own definition of what pondering is to you and what it means to you. Pondering, the word pondering. Even look for definitions or just give us some kind of like, like, for example, if there's someone in the page who just doesn't even know what pondering is and never heard of the word before, like, let's work together to give some kind of like um, explanation or some kind of... Um, a deeper understanding of what pondering is to you maybe on a personal level um, and I'll share as we go along what pondering means to me too um, and I actually I was supposed to have my nephew come on board tonight and he is coming tomorrow because he he needs to be um, yeah there's just some restrictions about around him but um, yeah I'm really grateful that he's coming in tomorrow night and uh, so it will be a, a late live like this um, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from him and hearing his insights. He did share a few things with me today about how this page is helping him find clarity. And um, But I'll let him do all the talking when he comes on tomorrow. And if you are interested too, um, I even mentioned this in the live earlier today, um, if by the Spirit you feel prompted to share something or you get that little giddy feeling inside of you when I um, invite to come and say something or come and share something or do you have an experience to share? If you feel that little giddiness in you, um, that then that could possibly be the Spirit just giving you that little nudge to, to come on board and say something. Um, but I'm also mindful that I can just pick on any one of you by the spirit too <clears throat> so don't be surprised if I just tap you on the shoulder and just say hey would you like to <laughs> um, yeah okay so just a little intro it's uh, today is just another experience that Nephi shares with us about uh, his experiences with these uh, people who have forgotten the Lord or people who are you know need a little bit of counsel about remembering the Lord <clears throat> those people can be us today too sometimes we are um, a bit short of hearing or you know hear our own voice before we hear the Lord's it's, that can be us too so this message is for us um, what are notes here some da -da 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 for signs Oh yeah, there's another message in, that I missed yesterday. Um, let me see. So we will give a signs. Okay. Um, yesterday it mentioned about how some people are looking for signs to, to know whether things are true. Like the, and that is quite, it can be a dangerous thing to look for a sign. Like me today, looking for a sign whether I should do this live or not. Man, I already knew in my head I shouldn't. But um, I just, just wanted to find a deeper, a bigger sign, a bigger sign saying, don't do it or stop. And yet already in my mind, I already knew um, I shouldn't do it. But, and this is some, sometimes this is like us when we, when it comes to our testimony, sometimes some of us are looking for the big signs that tell us, oh, Heavenly Father is true. And you know, the gospel is true. Sometimes we, we're looking for the, the big things to tell us when sometimes we already know 
and so it can be quite a little bit dangerous when you are looking for those big signs instead of going by your you know what you feel in your heart to be true go by that instinct rather than going by you know waiting for some big miraculous thing to happen um there's just a little bit of danger in that and that's what the come follow me lesson book talked about okay on that note let's have our prayer the sun is going down quickly it's just like right there and if it's a problem then we will change that i think it should be fine uh all right let's have prayer let's have prayer let's have prayer all right i say prayer belinda if you want to come in you just let me know okay just let me know. I'll say the prayer though. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for this wonderful opportunity we have to be here today. We thank thee for the opportunity we have to read our scriptures and to ponder them and to um, take heed to the message that we will hear today and that we may be able to act upon the promptings that we feel and um, be inspired by the Spirit to do what is right. Um, we pray, Father, for blessing upon those who are experiencing hardships and trials. And we pray for them that they may feel a spirit of comfort. And we also pray for those who are trying to understand the gospel, who are looking for answers. And they may be able to feel thy spirit to the spirit of understanding. And that we may be able to learn and share with each other and help one another. Um, as we go about our lesson today and we pray for a blessing um, upon my family in Tukuro who um, are gr grieving my, my cousin, their father and we pray for them that they may have comfort and our thoughts are with them and we also pray for a blessing upon my um, auntie and her family um, in Rarotonga that thy spirit may be with them also we pray for Father for these beautiful experiences we're able to have together and these things we humbly pray and invite thy spirit to be with us in Jesus name we pray, Amen Amen alright so Belinda if you want to come into the live just let me know and if anyone else wants to come in and do a bit of reading then please just let me know it's not a biggie okay um, <clears throat> all right, that sun is going down quickly. Can you see? It's like just about gone. All right, we're going to do our reading very shortly. But um, for those who are marking me, I know that you are one that uh, does a lot of marking. So the verses to look for, this is two to four. And I think there is um, a bit on uh, verses, let me see, two to four. And 4 to 5 and 11 and 12. So if you want to mark those scriptures, there's a bit of gold in there. Um, and here's the intro to the, to the whole chapter. If you, ever have, if you have ever felt down, trodden, anxious and confused, you might learn an important lesson from Nephi's example in Elaman, verse, chapter 10, verses 2 to 4. And so it invites us to see... Um, well, look for the answer to this question. What did he do when he was cast down? Oh, it's kind of like saying, what did Nephi do when he was feeling like a little bit down? And I think I need to get the light ready, okay? Oh, <laughs> let me just check. Okay, so if it gets a little bit dark, because my reading is shocking. It's shocking when it's dark, so I'm just going to get this light ready, okay? Um, and then we'll get on to the thing. And then we shall get on to it. We'll get up and running and, and organised, okay? So I was really pleased to hear my nephew. Okay, let's see if this light is just a bit too bright. Um, I was pleased to hear from my nephew today that... Um, oh, buddy, you'll talk more about it. How this page has been helping him find, find clarity in his changes, um, his life changes, eh? So I'm pretty excited to hear from him tomorrow. And he is, eh, I don't want to give it away. I don't want to tell you too much. 
because I just might give it away, but it, it's definitely something um, to look forward to tomorrow. And I think we'll probably come do a live around about, well, three o'clock, I think, from about three o'clock. Yeah, about three o'clock. So, hang on, let me just scroll across, okay. Okay, I just need to read something from here, from the manual. Okay. Oh, no, no, actually, I'll read it later. Okay, we can get into the reading now. So I'm reading from, I don't know who has um, a copy, or who needs a copy of the Book of Mormon uh, to follow along with our readings. Um, if you would like me to organize a copy for you, I can do that, no sweat. So just, just let me know if you want to follow along with the readings. Let me just get it organized here. That is rubbish. <clears throat> okay. So remember, I don't know, Belinda, if you're still hanging around uh, in there somewhere, but if, if you could look for a definition for us for pondering, the word pondering, just to help people understand what pondering is, because we're going to talk about it uh, very soon, actually. We only have 19 verses today, so it'll be really, it should be short. Our whole thing today should be short. Um, <clears throat> the show must go on. Even though I'm feeling like a little bit somber, I'm try really trying to um, bring on those feelings of the Spirit um, to help in our reading today. I'm, I'm just really missing my family. And you know what? The funny thing is that as I did start thinking about my family, I'm a, I'm a, food, I'm a food girl. Okay, if anyone knows me, I'm all about food. I'm highly emotional, and when I get emotional, I, I'm just looking for food. And um, I did have those feelings, like a bit of sadness, and I wanted to look for something to go and fill my joy up again, but um, um, I didn't do that today. So I'm, I'm just trying to be a good girl <laughs> um, and not to get too emotional or too... Um, clingy for food to fill my void <laughs> but anyway this will keep me out of trouble doing this keeps me out of trouble so that's why I just really love it it really it, it just improves my life in so much uh, such a just beautiful way and it keeps me out of trouble keeps me focused it keeps me where I need to be spiritually physically mentally okay um so I hope it's doing something for you too I hope it is doing something encouraging for you as well Okay, let's go. Let's start reading. So chapter 10. <clears throat> All right. So at this stage, Nephi is feeling a little bit disappointed, but you'll hear it as we, as we continue in the reading. Um, and I'll start now. Chapter 10. Chapter heading, uh, for those who are new, the chapter heading always tells us what's in the whole chapter. So I'm going to read that now. The Lord, uh, the Lord gives Nephi the sealing power. He is empowered to bind and loose on earth and in heaven. He commands the people to repent or perish. The Spirit carries him from multitude to multitude, about 21 to 20 BC. All right. And it came to pass, verse 1, and it came to pass that there arose a division among the people, and so much that they divided hither and thither and went their ways leaving Nephi alone as he was standing in the midst of them, even though they know that he is a prophet, even though they've just, you know, they have come to the terms um, that he has proven himself to be a prophet, even though he is a prophet, they still choose to leave him alone. I mean, I don't get that. When you, I mean, and as I'm reading, trying to see how some of this, you know, what you hear, how it relates to what you see today. Okay. Um, on the news, whatever, in your community, whatever. Uh, verse 2. <laughs> if I compare to that today, our living prophet today, you know, did the, there is no way, there is no way he will be left alone. I mean, he is such a loved person. Okay, verse 2. And it came to pass that Nephi went his way towards his townhouse, pondering upon the things which the Lord had shown unto him. And Belinda, when you find that definition, please post it for us so we can talk about it more. Verse three, pondering, pondering the things that the Lord had shown him. Beautiful. And it came to pass that as, as he thus was pondering, 
been much cast down because of the wickedness of the people of the Nephites. Their secret works of darkness and their murderings and their plunderings and all manner of iniquities. And it came to pass that, and it came to pass as he was thus pondering in his heart, behold, a voice came unto him saying, beautiful stuff, eh? And this is what he says, verse 4, Blessed art thou, Nephi, for those things which thou hast done, for I have beheld how thou hast with unweariness declared the word which I have given unto thee, unto this people, and thou hast not feared them, and hast not sought thine own life, but hast sought thy will, hast sought my will, and to keep my commandments. Beautiful. Um, there's some good counsel in here, and I don't know if you, um, if you could understand it. Okay, I'll read that um, out soon, Linda. Just let me know if you want to come in, and I'll just bring you in. Um, but uh, you know, it's kind of like just these first few verses are talking about how you know Nephi was feeling a little down because everything he sees is just wickedness, and he's not happy about it. He's not happy about how the people are reacting. Um, and he, and and how they're responding to him too. It's just it just doesn't make him feel good. So he's a little bit down, and he's pondering all the things in his mind. But then it also says in verse three, and it came to pass that this was pondering, and it came to pass as he was pondering in his heart, behold, a voice came unto him saying. So he's pondering the things, his experiences that he's just had. Um, he's pondering the things that the Lord has instructed him to say. He's, talk, he's thinking about, um, you know, things about his whole situation, really. And this is counsel for us. When we are, are going through those difficult times, it's good for us to just sit and ponder quietly to ourselves. Not today, yet. <laughs> it's okay. No problem. Um, but yeah, he's pondering in his heart and in his mind. And I'll, I'll talk... A lot I talk about that in a minute about pondering in your heart and mind. It's, it's such a beautiful connection to do that, and to me, it is the connection between the heart and the mind. All right, here we go. Let's read that definition. See if we're, if we're on point. To ponder, oh, this uh, first definition: to weigh in the mind, to consider and compare the circumstances or consequences of an event, or the importance of the reasons for. A, for or against the decision. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Beautiful. Um, to the view with the deliberation to examine. Ah, that's cool. To examine yourself and to examine the whole situation, what's happening. But to do that in connection with your heart and your mind, you will, um, you will absolutely, and I believe it to be true, you will ponder some beautiful thoughts and you'll also hear the answers that you need to hear continue a situation and in this situation he actually hears the voice a voice came unto him saying verse 4 blessed art thou nephi for those things which thou hast done for i have beheld how thou hast with unweariness declared the word which i have given unto thee unto this people and thou hast not feared them, and hast not sought thine own life. Have not sought thine, thine own life, but has sought my will. And to keep my commandments. Beautiful. So instead of thinking about his problem um, deeper, and how he can't fix it, or instead of um, like taking his own life, he, he chooses not to go that far. But instead of that, he, he looks to the will of, of the Father. And he does more of this, so we'll just, I'll, let, I'll explain as we go along. <sighs> that, that, you know, that's, that can be a peaceful feeling, yeah, and bring a peaceful feeling if you're in that mindset where you're just absolutely confused. You don't know what to do. You have had enough of this feeling, and you see no more joy in it. But if, I tell you what, and it is good counsel that if you look, you know, if you don't focus on your problem and you look to God, you'll find a, a, a better feelings will come to you. Better feelings will come to you. Absolutely. 
And when you don't keep the commandments, you, you kind of like know that you're digging a, a deeper hole for yourself. If that makes any sense. Okay, verse 5. And now because thou hast done this with such unweariness, behold, I will bless thee forever, and I will make thee mighty. I will make thee mighty in word, and in deed, and in faith, and in works. Yea, even that court, even that all things shall be done. So he's going to make him mighty, you know. Um, I just had these um, little impressions as I was reading that last part that, you know, he will make Nephi mighty. And I just want to share a little something, this little extra. Um, but when, when I was a young girl, I actually thought that I was like nothing. I used to actually think I was like, the, you know, that ugly duckling story. I absolutely thought that that was me. I used to not, oh man, I had so many dramatic things happen in my life as a young person. And one of those things is, is that I had very low self-esteem, very low self-esteem. And part of it was because, you know, I wasn't, you know, raised by my, my mother, my biological mother. So I just, I kind of like blame myself that I was no good. And I used to have these feelings like, uh, you're not good enough, lady, you're not. And no one really cares about you. So you are just, you are extra. You're not really anybody. Um, and I used to, I used to feel that way. But in the, in the strength of the Lord, I tell you, you know, I could have turned my thoughts into me, misery is me. And I don't know, I don't know how far I could have gone with that kind of um, thought. I don't want to think about it actually, but I just had something to focus on and that was just doing the will of the Lord. It was doing the will of the Lord and doing what he wants me to do and making myself better than I than what I am. And in the strength of the Lord, I know he has worked miracles in my life. Absolutely. I believe that. So there is a promise here for Nephi that that will happen for him too. Okay, so... Yeah, I was just trying to read my bad writing. Okay. Um, what does it say here? All things shall be done unto thee according to thy word, for thou shalt not ask that which is contrary to my will. Beautiful. Verse 6. Behold, thou art Nephi, and I am God. Behold, I declare it unto thee in the presence of mine anger, that ye shall have power over this people, and shall smite the earth with famine and with pestilence and destruction according to the wickedness of this people. Beautiful. Verse 7. Behold, I give unto you power that whatsoever ye shall seal on earth shall be sealed in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And thus shall ye have power among this people. And that is so true. You know, he can give us power. You know, this, this is also to, to us. Um, to not lose, not to not lose sight, eh? To not lose sight of God and his power and what he can do for us. Remember, the whole week is about remembering the Lord. And if we, you know, we can forget him. That's easy. But if we try harder to not forget him, he can give us strength. He can give us power in, in any of our trials and tribulation. He can make us stronger, even mighty. Verse 8, And thus, if ye shall say unto this temple, It shall be rent in twain, it shall be done. Beautiful. Oh, I like this verse. And if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou cast down, and become smooth, it shall be done. Verse 10, And behold, if ye shall say that God shall smite this people, it shall be, it shall come to pass. Okay, verse 11. And now behold, I command you that ye shall go and declare unto this people that thus saith the Lord God, who is the Almighty, except ye repent, ye shall be smitten, even unto destruction. And behold, it came to pass that when the Lord had spoken these words unto Nephi, he did stop and did not go unto his own house, but did return unto the multitudes, wow, <laughs> who were scattered 
about upon the face of the, of the land and began to declare unto them the word of the Lord which had been spoken unto him. Of course that would have given him power to do anything, eh? He's um, quite invincible at this stage concerning their destruction if they did not repent. Um, verse 13. Now behold, notwithstanding that great miracle which Nephi had done in telling them concerning the death of the chief of, of the judge, they did harden their hearts and did not hearken unto the words of the Lord. Pause here for a second. I've got some notes here. Um, all right. So even though just a little something about those who had hardened their hearts, um, you do have a choice to soften your heart and take heed to what the prophet is saying. You also have a choice to harden your heart and to continue and, and to be stubborn, um, hard of hearing, and quick to forget the Lord. Uh, we actually get to choose. He doesn't force us. But, um, yeah, we, we get to choose. Verse 14. Therefore Nephi de declare unto them the word of the Lord, saying, Except ye repent, thus saith the Lord, ye shall be smitten, even unto destruction. Verse 15, And it came to pass that when Nephi had declared unto them the word, behold, they did still harden their hearts, and would not hearken unto his word. Therefore they did revile against him, and did seek to lay their hands upon him, that they might cast him into prison. Verse 16, But behold, the power of God was with him, and they could not take him to cast him into prison, for he was taken by the Spirit and conveyed away out of the midst of them. Verse 17, And it came to pass that thus he did go forth in the Spirit, from the multitude to multitude, declaring the word of God beautiful, even until he had declared it unto them all, or sent it forth among all the people. Verse 18, And it came to pass that they would not hearken unto his word, his words, and there began to be contention, insomuch that they were divided against themselves, and began to stay one with another, stay one another with with the sword. And thus ended the seventy and first year of the reign of the judges and the people of Nephi. Okay, that was a short chapter. That's all done. <coughs> um all right, that's all done. Let me just see what's over here. Okay. Got a question here. How did he seek the Lord's will? Wow, he forgot his problems. He, you know, he just got over himself quickly, and especially when he heard the Lord. So I think that's part of it, eh? I think um, if you hear the voice of the Lord, because he did hear the voice of the Lord as he pondered. Yes! As he pondered, he heard the, you know, the voice of the Lord tell him. Uh, so I think it's, it's, it's quite an example for us to learn from. Um, like today I was feeling just a bit somber and not my happiest self. And now I've got things going on at the moment. And it does bring you down a little bit. But um, after reading our scriptures, man, I think I'm on fire again. You know, it's just the faith that comes from it. The, the spirit is strong. The mind is willing, the heart is willing, you know, the pondering together, which is, it just tells us that pondering is, it can be a beautiful thing. It can lift you, you know. Um, it can lift you. Because, you you know, when you, it, it just, I don't know, man, it, just, it, it can do some amazing things, eh? And I love pondering. And the funny thing, I've heard people say when they go to the bathroom, they they all these things come to their mind. That's pondering. It's fun to how, funny how we just find that little, you know, space to think. And I tell you, when you're rushing, when you're rushing the spirit especially, it will not come. You really need to take time to consider um, and examine as you ponder. And, and pondering is the connection between the heart and the mind and the beautiful things that happen together. Yes, absolutely, that's the key. Pondering when we hear his voice, absolutely, when we hear his voice. How do you hear him? You be quiet, you be still, you be humble, and you let him teach you. 
and that's exactly what Nephi did, right? <laughs> and like, he, he could have just been stubborn and like, just thought, ah, I'm gonna show these people. He even could have like, come out, you know, guns blazing and, and like chastise these people in, in such a, you know, angry way, but he chose not to, he just went quietly. They left him all alone. He could have like kept yelling at them, where are you going? Did he chose not to. He just chose to be silent and think and ponder and examine um, the things that the Lord had told him. And the things, and he still maintained that desire to do the will of the Lord. He, he maintained that desire um, wholeheartedly, even though he was feeling a little bit low. And even like today, as I thought, man, I just, blah, blah, I just feel like that today. And, and it, it took me a little while to try and generate enough faith and, and courage to just be myself and come on here and see what would happen. And, and sometimes it just takes that little bit of active faith and, and time to just sit and listen and, and ponder things I had tears in my heart when I watched my cousin's family service you know uh, <laughs> it's a funny thing about watching on a live because you you actually just sit there and you you can think and you can ponder the situation the person on the live is the one talking and that's what was happening in the in the life of my my cousin's family services just we are being peaceful. And there's a few of us families who are watching, observing, and we are just being peaceful. And we're watching our, our, our family speak from the heart. And I think you get, you do hear the voices of, not the voices, but the voice of the Lord as you are speaking. And he will bring things to your heart that you never thought you could ever generate um, at all. And it's not you, mate. <laughs> It's not us. It is not us. We just, we're the ones that just, you know, act on it, those feelings. <clears throat> but the true testimony and the true experience of it comes when, you know, we invite the Spirit to be there. And only by the Spirit can we feel these beautiful words and, and this power come from God. Only by the Spirit. When there is no spirit present, it is just us thinking and talking to ourselves. Um, and it is a powerful thing when you can hear the Lord say exactly what you need to hear. Um, exactly what you need to hear to examine your, your own situation. Because everyone is, you, you, you know, everyone has different circumstances. And depending on your faith, depending on your desire to know, depending on your works, according to your faith, according to the desires of your heart, will the Lord speak to you. And he can speak in such profound ways in a very still small voice. Oh gosh, this, this morning, my husband and I, we read, I think it was said Nephi chapter 10 or 11. It is the chapter when the Lord, when Heavenly Father introduces his son. And it, it says there, it was just a peaceful voice. It was a quiet voice, but it was enough to pierce um, the hearts of those people where they became shaken. Their bodies became, sh you know, it, it shook their bodies that's how piercing the voice was to them. And I think those experiences can come to us too. It, it depends on whether we have a desire for it, to hear his voice. And how hard are we looking to hear or trying to hear? Are we just like on the surface kind of, oh, okay, I'm not very, I'm not really uh, listening properly. Or, you know, even in your pondering, are you kind of like telling the Lord what to do when you're pondering? Or are you waiting on the Lord to hear what he wants you to do? And, and it's one thing to hear and it's another thing to act on those promptings of what he tells you to do. Yeah? 
Man, don't even get me started. I love reading these powerful chapters and they are beautiful. They're beautiful examples. I, mean, I couldn't imagine my life without these, you know, beautiful stories that they help me. I don't know if they do anything for you, but oh my gosh, I just see it clearly. And today my nephew came forward and said, and you know, Auntie, I see things with clarity now. I see where I'm going wrong. And that just brings me joy. When you see things with clarity, it just means the Spirit is working in you. You know, there is no confusion because the Spirit is working in you. You have that strong desire to know. You know, the Lord can only give you the greater portion if you are put the, putting in the greater effort. And you can't, you know, expect that to be spoon-fed. You know, you have to be doing something. But it's according to your works. It's according to the desires of your heart, whether you want to hear it whether you want to see it and whether you want to believe it. Because even these people, they heard the voices from, you know, they heard the prophets speak to them with clarity, but they switched off. They didn't want to hear it. They had in their heart. And that is like some of us today. We, even, even some of us, you know, that go to church and say, sometimes we don't want to hear it. And it's just normal. We, we are humans. We're not perfect people, you know. And we will be slow to hear at times because we, you know, we're struggling with our own thoughts of what we think is right. Um, but I know the works of the Spirit are, you know, beautiful and miraculous in in anybody's life. And you don't have to be like a scholar. You don't have to be the brainiest person that knows everything. You could be simply someone who just wants to know. You could be someone who just. You could be a beggar. Just someone who wants wants to know. And the Spirit will work in you. I know it and I believe it. He will make, you know, what is that saying? I've heard it before. Um, he will make ordinary people extraordinary. Um, and in the strength of the Lord, I know and believe that the Lord can do that for you. When you think that you cannot overcome this trial that you, you have, you know, you cannot overcome these addictions that you have you think again and you ponder it out in your mind and your heart you know if i if you just have a desire that's enough to plant a seed you know to make change that's enough and then will you understand you know, what changes you have to make i mean like i said according to your uh, works according to the desires of your heart i absolutely believe that okay if there's anything you want to share please just pop it into the um, into the comments and I will read it for you and I will discuss it and I will share and we can share and that's how we learn. All right, so um, I've got a question here. Um, hmm. Okay, I just share a bit of that already. Connection between heart and the mind, yes, brings understanding. Okay, so pondering does bring that understanding. Um, and it does bring that clarity that you need. And like some people go searching for years for that clarity. They just can't get it right. I mean, they just don't know what it is that's stopping them from making the change. And because, you know, because you just, and especially when it comes to addictions and things like that, you just reoffend, reoffend, re reoffend. Like my little stint today, I was feeling a little bit emotional. Um, about my family and my cousin, I was ready to just give in my 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 good eating habits because I was feeling emotional and I just wanted to grab something out front of my mouth and just feel comfort. But then I chose not to because I knew the consequences behind that. But I've learned, I've heard that before, but I still don't listen. But um, you know, you have to control, take a control on the things that you want to stop doing. You have to. Um, and by the man, do some pondering. I tell you, the answers will come to you. What you should do, and then when you, look at my dog, my dog is looking at me like crazy. <laughs> he's just staring at me like he's listening to me. Hey Oreo, yes boy, you listening to me? <laughs> it's so weird. It feels like he's looking at me like he really understands what I'm saying. <laughs> I see. That's the power in you. When you speak with the spirit, and the spirit will the truth of all things that you should do and I absolutely believe that if you're struggling with addictions 
and we all do in some way it doesn't have to be the big major addictions it could be anything it could be like just anything because like we all know we're not perfect but um if we are struggling with anything the answer came to us today in our lesson and that is to take heed to nephi and like even f not i don't like mean to say it in a bad way but just forget your problem forget your problem and look to the will of the lord look to him you know the more we ponder on our, on our problems and especially if they're problems that we can't fix you know it's just going to bring us to misery but if you look to 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 god there is hope there there's always hope in christ and i'd rather look there me myself personally i'd rather look there than look at something that i can't fix i'd rather look to christ because there is a hope that i can fix it through him and um i totally understand that and sometimes we just get so down on ourselves because we think oh man this is like end of the world status man i tell you there's always someone worse off than you when you think that you can't do something there's always someone that just wish they had your life because it's way better than what they're experiencing you just got to have that well to me it does it does change everything when you just have gratitude in your heart for for anything and everything, every single day. I mean, even my husband and I were talking this morning. Man, we've got to be stupid idiots to not think that we uh, are blessed, you know, to be living in this beautiful country that is just a blessing. It's just a blessing. And if I ever, and we even spoke to each other like this, and we said, man, I hope we never, ever complain about things. I hope we never, because that is, is such an ingratitude. You know, don't even complain. Um, and just always look for something to be grateful for. <laughs> it's just words to my husband, and, you know, to each other. That's how we talk to each other in the mornings. And we try and um, ponder the things that we read. See, here we go, pondering. Pondering is it's such a beautiful thing. You study it out in your heart and your mind and the just the beautiful things can come from and you don't have to like I said you don't have to be a scholar you don't have to be this wonderfully experienced person and knowing these things and an expert at doing no way you just need a desire and it can happen to anybody who is looking for change who's looking to change you know that's where you start have a desire you don't need to know how to change like even just trust it trust that the lord will tell you what you need to do step by step to make changes and you know don't think that you can just change everything overnight it doesn't happen that way it's a progressive change but i tell you taking heed to the lord every little step of the way through pondering it's just amazing that the, you know he'll tell you bang do this and the impressions will come loud as if he is speaking to you loud you know even as nephi experienced it so it's just beautiful 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 okay there is a quote that i'm going to read here that is about um pondering and it is a beautiful one okay no no this is not for today okay <laughs> i write things on paper everywhere it's all my notes i tell you um, I need an assistant to follow me around and cut all these pieces of stuff together and, and just make sense of it. Um, and experiences. The spirit is strong. Always cards. The spirit is strong when we have a desire to know these things. And like I, I said before, you don't have to be an expert on it, but you need to trust the Lord. You need to invite the spirit into your life. You need to be wholeheartedly looking for um, the answers. And they will come to you, you know. They will come to you um it's you know and, and just the more that you trust the more that you exercise your faith the more that you do the more that you learn the more that you read study in your heart and in your mind and ponder these things you will absolutely believe, believe and know that they are true and they are you know like it's pure counsel for yourself you know gosh my gosh i tell you um i've been <laughs> when did i get married to my husband 
2012. Okay, we've been married 20 years. I think we've been together about 11 years before that. Oh, uh, uh, 30 years or something. So we've been together that long. And in that journey, I tell you, the first 11 years were pretty rocky as they're rocky as because we, we chose to not turn to the Lord. We, weren't, we were nowhere near. They were all about ourselves and, and what we want to think and what we want to do. And it was just a learning experience that way. We were just teaching ourselves. And then when we finally, well, when I finally went back to church and I just thought, nah, I had enough of this life. And then it wasn't until then, I step by step taking every, every bit of counsel, you know, from my bishop, from my leaders, from my Relief Society president, or my visiting teachers, you know, everybody that came my way, the missionaries, my husband, everybody that gives you counsel. And you understand that those things are true. Obedience, you know, is the first principle in heaven. And I tell you, if you take note of that, that that'll make your life so much easier, so much easier. The more obedient we are, the more he will bless us with. Absolutely. But, and then at the same time, you know, you have to know and understand that you will make a thousand, for every choice that you make right, you will make another maybe 50 or so not right. And it's that kind of um, relationship you will have with the Lord. But if you do it with him, he will always put you back on track. And, and the quicker that you get that done, the better it is for yourself and for your family, you know, to just, you know, instead of like feeling the guilt of it, because some of those things that we do wrong, we do feel guilty and we can't bring ourselves to change it and we can't bring ourselves to face it and deal with it. And that, that can be more detrimental to your spirit than dealing with it um, and admitting to it. You know, admitting to your wrongs, is, it's such a, um, a healing process. <clears throat> which comes to the part where I was kind of, we actually talked about this, Belinda, the other night. And um, it was that scripture, and I, I, I knew, cause I, during the week I had seen this scripture, and I thought, wow, I know I'm going to need that scripture. But I didn't screenshot it or anything, and then that just made life harder for me when it really came to the time to look for it. But you and I, um, Belinda, we discussed it, and, and this is, it just brings a lot of understanding to just everything when you read it. Um, I don't know if I should finish with this one, but I'll read it. I'll read it shortly. Before I do that, I want to read this quote about um, about pondering, and this is what it says, and this is by President Henry B. Iron, who is my most. Mo I love this man completely. When I was um, when I first started out being a, a seminary teacher, he would he just everything he said. He said it in such a beautiful way and. Oh, beautiful spirit. I felt it every time he said something. This, so this is from President Henry B. Irene, and this is what he taught. Oh, I, I, he's my mentor, honestly. And he says, quote, When we ponder, we invite revelation by the Spirit. Pondering to me is thinking and praying I do. Uh, is thinking and the praying I do after reading and studying the Scriptures carefully with the Spirit. Um, and this is from to read. Uh, okay, how much you create a a habit of pondering to read about one, read about one way. To read about one way to regularly ponder the word of God. See, brother, the message in my mind. Okay, that's a talk. That's a talk that it wants us to look into. Um, but President Irene says. Pondering to me is thinking and the praying I do after reading and studying in the scriptures carefully. Wow, you know, that takes it next level. You know, pondering can come anytime, but when you do it after you've finished reading your scriptures and saying your prayer, oh my gosh, let the flow come, open the floodgates, it's, it's coming, you know, and the revelation will just come in such a profound way. You know, like my husband says, <laughs> we do our scripture reading in the morning. It's like he has to talk first because if he doesn't, he won't get a word in. 
and he knows this too. And, and so I, I give him all the time to come forward and speak up, um, and he does that. He gets to he gets to say what he wants in his own time, and then when I come in, I just go off in oblivion, and and I can't stop. Um, but anyway, before we close, I'm gonna read the uh, scripture. All right, this is the scripture I'm gonna finish off with, and it's from John sixteen thirty three. Belinda, this is the one we were talking about the other day, and this is the reason why you, sh you know you should just let all those worries go let them go and it, sometimes that's the hardest thing to do all these addictions and those feelings of guilt shame anxiety you know whatever it is that just brings you down let them go and this is why uh, this is the savior and he says these things i have spoken unto you that in me you might love uh, you might have peace in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer, I have um, overcome the world. I have overcome the world. We do not need to carry these heavy burdens. Um, we don't need to carry these heavy burdens around that we do carry. These things that stop us from improving, these things that stop us from being our best selves, these things that you know, just bring feelings of guilt and shame um, because what we are doing is wrong. My dog is right here looking at me. Um, help yourself for you. Just knock yourself out. And um, we don't have to carry it. You know, and the the less baggage we carry around, carry around with us, the more we can improve, the more we can move forward, the more we can exercise our faith, the more we can feel good about ourselves, and the more we can trust in God and allow the healing powers of the atonement to work in us. And beautiful scripture. We do not need to carry the burdens around, please. And there are people on here who will not understand that. Um, but understand this, that these things are true. These things we are talking about are true. I mean, I'll read that scripture again. These things I have spoken unto you, that in, you, in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Who cares about those problems? Let it go. Come on, just let it go. You know, allow yourself to feel some peace. You know, everyone in the whole world, not just you, experiences sin. Everybody. We all do it. And we are all learning. We are all trying our best to move forward. We are all um, imperfect and we're just doing this journey the best way we can and learning studying pondering praying will give us the th you know the words that we need to hear and that's the thing when you let it go it allows you to hear hear what the lord wants you to wants you to hear to move on and not satan's Badgering, tapping you on the shoulder. Oh, look at you. You did this. You did that. Shame on you. Look at, they are talking about you because you did this. No, you will not hear those things. But you will hear the Lord in your heart telling you what you should do. And, you know, what's our saying, Belinda? Look to God and live. <laughs> but yeah, he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world that brings me peace beautiful 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 um and on that note what time do we start i can't even remember what oh yeah five o'clock so we're on the hour well done see pat on the back we are so good and i'm glad we got through this because i was feeling a little bit down and you know i i do you know love my cousin who has passed away i love my my family down there, gosh, I miss them. And it was good being together in our, in our um, live, watching the family service today. It just brings peace. And I'm grateful that we were able to get this, get through this. And I know I'd, I'd feel misery if I didn't do it. And, you know, we, we're not into misery, yeah? We're not into misery. We're, only, we're into hope. We're into faith. We're into... Um, beautiful things. 
But on that note, I'll, I'll close our um, lesson tonight. If you've got anything else to say, Belinda, please pop, pop it in the comments. And even when you come in for the replays, then come and share something beautiful. And even some awesome experiences that you've had through pondering, please share it with us. And lift one another. Um, feel better. <laughs> I feel better. Yes, families are precious. Yes, but there is peace in knowing that families are forever. And that I'm truly grateful for. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the healing powers of the atonement. And I truly understand that. And if you are still learning about that and how it works with you and for you and your family, then please ask the questions to bring better clarity um, for you. But in closing, I'd like to be my testimony. I know that these things that we've talk, uh, talked about today are absolutely true. I believe them with all my heart. I believe uh, that they will bring more beautiful days into our life. And I'm grateful for the gospel. I, I love my Heavenly Father. He's been so good to me. And oh, I'm just really grateful. My husband always growls me. He said, you know, just stop it. Just relax. Just relax. <laughs> it just tries to keep me humble but you know it's hard to stay level you know because you just feel the power that comes from the spirit and I always just feel so happy because of it and he says just relax turn yourself down um yeah I'm grateful for the uh, for the atonement and especially for our Savior Jesus Christ and our living prophet today who is beautiful and I'm grateful for um, my family. I love them all. And I love you all, everybody in this group, amazing people. Um, and I express my gratitude and my joy to each one of you and your families. And I humbly say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And Belinda, high five Belinda. We did it. And let's have a prayer. Let's have a prayer. And you can go and be amazing again. All right, I say prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity we've had to come and feel thy spirit and be um, edified um, with this beautiful, beautiful lesson today. And we're grateful, Father, for the spirit that has taught us and grateful for the uh, knowledge and understanding um, that we have been given about pondering and help us to apply this pondering in our daily lives help us to put aside all the vain things of the world and help us to focus on our Savior and that we may remember the Lord in all things and take heed to his promptings and into his counsel and um, we're grateful, Father, for all our blessings and pray for a blessing upon all our members of this group that they may find truth and understanding in the things that they are learning and reading and studying and pondering. And please bless each and every one of us and our families to be safe. And we're grateful for these blessings and favors we ask of in the name of thy Son. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen, everybody. Go and have a bit. Have you had dinner? What's for your fellas' dinner? I think I've had my dinner. I had my lunch and that's it. But um, I shall see you tomorrow and my nephew will see you tomorrow. I think it might be a late live tomorrow, but I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted. And love you all. Bye.